We made it to a thousand subscribers! Woohoo! Hello and welcome back! In today's video, I'm gonna share with you the top 5 lessons I learned in my journey to a thousand subscribers. I know some of you are also working on your own YouTube channels and I hope that this will be helpful for you. First off, I'd like to thank you for subscribing and supporting the channel. Having you subscribing and staying tuned has been such an honor for me. Your engagement helps keep me going and without your comments, making videos is just not that fun. I also want to give a special shout out to the people that have invited me in the past to collaborate with them. I also want to thank the people that have taken the time to do watch fam chats with me. And finally, I want to thank the people that have given me shout outs in the past. I find that creating content on YouTube is just more rewarding and fun when you treat it as a collaborative community rather than a competition. I'm glad that most of the people I've met here have been very supportive. So in the same spirit of helping others, I wanted to do this video about the lessons I've learned in the past two years. Hopefully, you'll get to 1,000 faster than I did. So without further ado, here are my top 5 lessons in the journey to 1,000 subscribers. The first important lesson that I've learned that I wish I took to heart sooner was don't try to blend in with everyone else. I didn't know why I started with the mindset of trying to fit in what everyone else was doing. I guess maybe at the start you have to try to do something just to get started and I guess later on adjust from there based on the feedback. However, it took me way too long to try out being more like myself. As time progressed and I developed my own style, the more I felt comfortable in my own voice. And soon I realized the name I chose initially didn't represent me anymore. So after changing the name to better represent me and what I had to offer, the channel started growing at a much faster pace. I really wish that I had done that sooner. I guess the lesson here is choose a name that represents you and is unique enough and play to your own strengths and let your personality shine through. I've come up with a worksheet to help you define your own strategy and the link is in the description. Second, be clear with yourself why you do it. So everyone has a reason for why they want to start a channel. Everyone has different goals. Once I was able to define for myself why I do what I do and what my personal short-term goals are, it's easier for me to be content with myself. Not feeling bad if I compare myself with others who are growing at a much faster rate, asking myself questions like, am I not good enough? Am I too lazy? Am I not taking enough risks? And so on. So for me right now, I consider this as a hobby. I don't want this to be another source of stress because life is stressful enough as it is. I would like for it to be as fun and as low pressure as possible and I know that would limit me compared to the others and that's okay. Separating my online life versus my personal life is also very important to me and maintaining this level of privacy I know limits my growth as well and that's okay. Lastly, if you know why you're doing this and what your values are, it makes it easier to deal with the haters because there are going to be haters. Third, don't fall into the comparison trap. I used to feel a little bad about being left behind, especially when there are other channels who are growing at a much faster pace who started around the same time as me or started later than me. I guess a bit of it comes from this feeling of entitlement, like just because I worked hard on it, I'm entitled to the views, but it doesn't work like that. So going back to the previous lessons I've mentioned, I needed to define what value I had to offer. And once I've defined what value I had to offer and executed it properly, then the views will come. Everyone has a unique value that they bring to the table and they work really hard on it. And in YouTube, other people's successes do not diminish your own. There is enough audience for everyone and as long as you focus on earning your viewers through providing value, it will be easier to tune out the envy. Number four, prioritize the viewer above all else. 
When I first started in 2019, everyone was saying the algorithm prefers longer videos. So at the beginning, I tried to stretch it out for as long as I could. But later on, as I learned more and more about YouTube and its metrics like click-through rate and retention rate, I learned that shorter, faster-paced, chock-full-of-value videos are much better. In prioritizing the retention rate, I focused on improving the way I edit and the way I structure my videos so I don't waste the viewer's time. Comparing my first, very first video to my latest video, it's a massive difference. The second aspect about prioritizing your viewers above all else is being on the side of the viewer against companies that ask you to lie or omit the bad stuff about them. The trust of your audience is valuable. Don't trade your integrity to get free stuff. You can always buy stuff, but you can't buy back the trust of your audience. Lastly, this one came about when other YouTube channels were being deleted. I learned that I needed to aim for the title of content creator instead of YouTuber. We, as content creators, connect with other people. YouTube is just the medium, and it's not the only medium. So when I shifted my mindset, it opened my mind to other possibilities. So aside from YouTube, I also have Instagram. I also do a little bit of TikTok and I also have my own website, which I don't use that much, but I figured might as well make one. YouTube, Instagram, and all these other platforms won't be around forever. So as much as possible, I'd like to take advantage of what's available. However, I don't want to spread myself too thinly, so I'm only focusing on YouTube and Instagram for now. So those are the top 5 lessons I learned in my journey to 1000 subscribers. It's been a fun journey so far, and I've learned a lot. If this alias Eve Watches channel doesn't work out, it's okay. I know I've learned a lot of skills that I can apply to other areas in my life, so it's not a complete waste of time. The journey to a thousand subscribers has been a worthwhile experience. I haven't met the 4,000 hour watch time requirement, so that's another thing I have to work on and I'll continue to try and provide content that brings value to you. It's been a huge privilege for me having you watch the videos I make and really, thank you. If you have any questions for me, let me know and I've listed out links below which I think will be helpful for you.